Greetings, fellow internet entrepreneurs. I hope you're all making it through this pandemic okay. Um, my name's David Scott. I am also an internet entrepreneur. I joined this group because I wanted to, um, I'm always looking for new ways to earn money online, as I'm sure you all are. I started trying to make money on the internet uh, back in 2008. I, uh, early on, I, I had a computer, I knew how to use it. Uh, I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn how to build my own websites. And um, I didn't have a lot of resources to uh, get an education in coding or computer science or something like that. So what I did instead is I realized, well, hey, if you got a computer and you got an internet connection, then you don't need school. You can, the information's out there if you know where to look for it. So I started looking for information on um, how to code, how, how computers work and, and how websites are built. And um, I learned a bit about coding enough uh, that I was able to, um, with the help of um, using, you know, internet platforms, they were just starting to pop up back then, uh, the pay platforms like Squarespace, uh, for instance, um, or WordPress, where you pay them to, you know, put up a site for you, and then you go in there and make edits to it. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but, you know, anyone who's tried to do that, many of you have, I'm sure some of you probably are using those kind of platforms right now. Um, first of all, they're kind of pricey. Uh, for me, I thought it, you know, 35 bucks a month back then, I think, to use Squarespace uh, was pretty high. Um, and uh, also, they limit you creatively. They're, you're not um, usually able to, you kind of have to stick to their structure and, and kind of, you know, you, you're using the existing code they have written into their platform. And uh, they sometimes, you know, they'll usually make it possible for you to modify it if you know how if you know some coding that you can go in there and make modifications and tweaks and uh, make the site you know look more the way you want it to look exactly so uh, that's kind of what i did you know i started i'd take snippets of code from here and snippets of code from there and put them into my websites and uh so you know uh probably the first website i ever put up was using squarespace well, I regretted that later because I learned later that there are free platforms like Google Sites and others. Uh, Google Sites has become my favorite uh, platform to use, and I build most of my websites using Google Sites now. Um, and uh, But again, even with Google Sites on the classic platform as well as the new Google Sites, you're going to be limited creatively with what you can do with those platforms. And if you have some coding knowledge, it'll give you uh, the ability to go in there and make tweaks and customize your websites. So, okay, great. I, I, I taught myself how to build a website. I learned how to get it up on the internet. I started putting some content up there, um, mostly uh, some, some of my feeble writing. I'm not the, the world's greatest writer. Uh, and I, so I turned to photography because I figured I'm a pretty good photographer. Photography is cheap. It's easy. You know, um, you don't need film anymore, you know, with digital cameras, it's, it's pretty easy. And if you know some basics about photography, you can take pretty good photos. So, uh, I started, you know, going around with a digital camera and taking a lot of pictures of things and then putting those up on my websites, you know, and creating content uh, as, as I could that way. And, it, you know, um, blogging, of course, uh, you, if you have a website, then you're probably going to have a blog attached to your website, either directly part of your website or, you know, separate of your website, but linked to your website so that, um, you know, so I started experimenting with blogging as well. 
And so I, I had some content up. I've got some photos up. I'm starting to get traffic. I uh, learned how to use Google Analytics and link my website to Google Analytics so I could, um, you know, track, see if, you know, you always want to see if you're getting traffic to your websites, right? So uh, I, you know, started tracking the traffic to my websites. And, you know, of course, it was minimal. You know, you just, you don't get a lot of traffic to your websites. People don't know who you are. They don't know where you are. They don't know how to find your website. So you have to, then you have to start learning how to draw traffic in, right? So uh, I started researching that. And then uh, I started creating my first social, uh, you know, networking pages. I went and joined Facebook and MySpace and these other uh, social networking that was going on. Uh, and getting people to, you know, visit my websites and look at my content a little bit on my blogs. Uh, still not much. And I was surprised at how little it was. Um, and you go into forums and try dropping links in places and, you know, anything to get some attention. And, and let's face it, folks, you guys have tried this. You, you just don't get a lot of traffic that way. So, uh, I became rather discouraged and sort of gave up on the project. Well, not really. I was still, you know, now, now I was thinking, okay, I, I, I've, I've got this knowledge. How am I going to make some money doing this? So uh, at that point, uh, I started as early as 2009, uh, trying like uh, uh, affiliate marketing. I'm sure a lot of you have tried this. You see a lot of content out there on the internet about it. Um, like uh, they say, uh, you know, you can make, you know, thousands, you know, doing affiliate marketing. Well, I didn't have that kind of experience. I uh, joined a couple of different affiliate programs, started getting the codes for their ads, putting them on my websites. I made a few few dollars here and there, but not nothing to speak of. I mean, definitely, it was not worth all the time I put into it. Um, and so, generally, do not recommend affiliate marketing unless you've already got a website that's getting, you know, tons and tons and tons of visitors. You have to have a lot of traffic to make any money doing that. So, uh, that was a little discouraging. I kind of started putting things on hold and I was a little transient at the time, uh, kind of living out of my car. Uh, it was right after the big crash happened and I got laid off. And, uh, so, uh, I'm traveling around and, uh, you know, after trying these different things and I tried doing some commission sales commissions, you know, where you, write a blog post about a product and then put a link there for it and they pay you a commission. I tried doing that and I, you know, yeah, again, I made a little money, but not enough to make it worth my time. So, uh, finally I thought, well, look, all, all of this stuff, you know, it's, I, I put all these hours into it and I was learning a lot. I knew a lot of coding and I was getting pretty good at it, but, uh, I still wasn't making any money off of, and I, and I checked Google analytics and all of a sudden this was like, eh, maybe two years later, I look and check analytics and I'm getting 15,000 hits a month to my website. And I thought, wow, that's a lot. 15,000 visitors a month. Now, probably a lot of that was robot traffic, but it was enough for me to uh, feel encouraged again. And I decided, wow, you know, 15,000 people a month, that's like having 15,000 people walk through your store and you don't have anything on the shelves. So I decided, man, let's get something on the shelf. And uh, my idea was at the time, New Mexico chili. Well, I wasn't even living in New Mexico. I was living in California at the time, but I thought uh, I grew up in New Mexico and we're out in New Mexico we love our New Mexico chili, and I thought that would be an easy product to ship. It has real value. 
uh, and uh, so I wanted to set up an e-commerce store. And after trying all these different things, e-commerce was seemed like you know a, a more substantial and realistic way to go. So I returned to New Mexico, and uh, I was like I said before, I was living out of my car at the time, but uh, I, I, a friend of mine, dear friend of mine was kind enough to let me stay on his land with his dad. And um, while staying at, staying out there, uh, it was pretty rough digs, but I did have an internet connection. And so uh, I, I went ahead and built an e-commerce site um, to sell New Mexico chili. And it's called Chimayo Chili Brothers. And uh, the reason is, is because my friend lived near uh, this little area in New Mexico called Chimayo uh, that is world famous uh, for its legendary chili. Okay. So, uh, you know, I thought, yeah, we're close to Chimayo. We'll find a source for the chili and then we'll sell, we'll offer the chili online. So I spent a lot of time building the e-commerce site. I used PayPal as the payment platform. And if any of you don't have PayPal accounts, get one now. Be sure to create a PayPal business account. And then you can create payment buttons like you see on e-commerce sites. You know, those little yellow buttons that say pay now or view cart or whatever. Uh, so... I used PayPal to generate my payment buttons, copied that code onto my website, and uh, started offering New Mexico chili uh, as a product for sale online. Well, I was really shocked uh, when, uh, as soon as I published the website, I got an order for New Mexico chili, and I hadn't even shared the link anywhere yet. I hadn't done any kind of SEO operation. I hadn't, you know, I, I didn't even put keywords in there other than what was just written on the page. So I was really surprised when I got an order uh, the first night I put the website up. Uh, and that was very encouraging. So what I did after that was, you know, oh, here's the funny thing. I didn't even have any chili when the order came in. I had to run down to the store and get some chili to ship out the order and of course I didn't make a dime on the sale but I was you know I was still very encouraging so uh, after that uh, I started just going with that with that idea you know and so uh, you know if you don't know how uh, you buy a domain name uh, from you know uh, an internet provider uh, I recommend Google uh, I do everything with Google, uh, but you can buy your domain name directly from Google. Just type in Google domains. And once I had my domain name, you point it at your website and then you share that domain name all over the internet, share it on your social media pages, share it in the comments sections of newspapers, uh, any website that has an open forum, share your link all over the place, especially in those forums that are directly related to your product. So for me, since I'm selling New Mexico chili, I look for groups about New Mexico. I look for groups about spicy food. I look for groups about uh, cooking uh, recipes, things like that. And I spread my links around in there. And that's how I generate most of my traffic. And by doing that, I lift myself up in the search rankings, in Google search rankings, because Google Google, when they see a website out there, they, they also kind of see all these links that are attached to the website. And when they see all these links all over the internet attached to your website, that lifts you up, especially in the specific uh, category or subject that your website is in. So in other words, if they see your link, in a lot of recipe websites, then Google concludes that your website is a good place to go for recipes. So it lifts you up in the, in, in the rankings. So uh, having some success with that, uh, and, and I, oh, I wanna tell you this too, I didn't do it completely alone. I partnered up 
with my buddy. Uh, and because, you know, he uh, lived near the source of the chili. So uh, it made sense. And he didn't have the skills I had about, you know, the coding skills or the ability to put a website up or to promote the website. So he was very happy to uh, be responsible for shipping out the orders as the orders came in. And that relieves me of that. I don't want to have to worry about you know, packaging chili and shipping out orders as they come in. Uh, I want to be able to build more websites to promote my website. I have to keep the books. I have to do the taxes. I have to maintain the website. That's my job. Um, and uh, he ships out the chili. We split the profit. Easily done. Uh, and uh, so with that little success kind of tucked under my belt, uh, even though I wasn't making a lot of money, it wasn't enough to make me rich, but um, after a while, it started to pay some bills. And um, we were never in the, like, red. I, I never lost money doing it. We always had more money coming in than we were putting out. We've never really had to pay taxes because we've never made that much money. Um, but uh, the it, it's still growing. You know, and we launched our business in 2012, I think, uh, 2011, really, but officially 2012. And um, so every year it's grown a little bit, grown a little bit, grown a little bit. And at first, you know, I was probably just breaking even. But now, you know, I use it to pay for my Internet, for instance, and I use it to pay, um, you know, for some gas once in a while. I use it to pay for... Uh, my AAA insurance, things like that. So it has improved my life and it's a success. And, and, and you know, after trying all those other things and, and, and failing really and not succeeding, e-commerce worked for me uh, enough that it made me want to continue. Uh, so uh, I talked earlier about doing commissions, you know, and while that's largely been a failure, I did have a little success in contracting with Google to do uh, a G Suite referral. Now, if you guys don't know what G Suite is, uh, visit some of my pages uh, and use my links uh, to sign up. You get a free trial, and then uh, if you use my link, you'll get 20% off your first year of service. But Basically, G Suite gives you everything uh, that Microsoft Office Suite gives you, only uh, it costs a lot less. And uh, some find that Google is easier to work with. Um, I use both uh, Microsoft Office Suite and uh, G Suite. And G Suite includes a lot of things you're probably already using, like Google Docs and uh, you know, uh, Google Slides or Google Sheets, uh, basically all those tools you find in Google Drive. But uh, G Suite, uh, you know, in, uh, provides enhanced security and it allows you to manage uh, your users' email accounts. It's if you're a business owner and you need to operate a business and you're concerned about keeping your stuff internal and you want to manage your emails, employees, uh, your employees' emails, that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, I highly recommend it. I use it myself. It's a great product. And they have paid me some money. Uh, now, I have to say, it's been tough getting paid by Google. Uh, the G Suite sales that I made in the U.S., uh, and, and you do it by, they give you a link that's specific to you and you spread your link around people who use your link to sign up for G Suite, you get a commission. Okay. So, uh, if, if the sales I made in the U S fine, no problem. They put the money directly in my bank account, but I was offering G Suite in Italy, in India, in Australia, in Japan, in Hong Kong. And uh, some of those places I still never got paid from. So I don't, uh, I don't know, you know, about that. Uh, probably if you're going to do that, 
my advice would be don't bother trying to do it outside of your geographical area. If you're going to refer G Suite, stick to doing it on your continent or, you know, whatever your region is uh, so you don't run into those problems and getting paid. Uh, and like I have to say, was it worth it? I don't know. I mean, I probably for the time I put into it, I guess I'm finally I still get an order now and then I still get a little money. I see a little money once in a while going into my bank account coming from Google. It's not much, you know, $40 here, $40 there. Um, so, yeah, I guess it was worth the time. I mean, what did I do? I slapped up a web page with the link on it. Um, I did a little YouTube video, you know, with the link. And, you know, so it generates a sale now and then, whatever. I guess it's better than not getting 40 bucks once in a while. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, apps. Now, uh, the the latest thing, and this is really new, is these. there's all these new phone apps that come out uh, that allow you to uh, contract with a company. And that company will... Uh, that company will pay you basically to use their app and usually it's to accomplish a, a task which in this case like okay the first one i did uh i have experience in the legal profession i've uh, worked for attorneys as a paralegal uh, for many years so uh when i started looking for these kind of opportunities one of the ones that popped up was this company, ABC Legal. Now, ABC Legal is based out of Washington. And uh, basically, they offer various legal services, but one of the services they offer is service of process. Uh, so, you know, in a legal proceeding, uh, you can't commence a legal proceeding until uh, the defendant has been served a summons to, to come to court, right? So, um, ABC Legal, uh, basically, they have an app that you can download to your phone, and uh, you you contract with them. Uh, and I did it all remotely. I, you know, uh, you signed their contract and filled out some papers. They did a background check on me. They uh, wanted to see some identification. I sent them a copy of my driver's license and my uh, uh, proof of insurance and proof of registration of my vehicle and then uh so they accepted me into their program and uh after i downloaded their app to my phone they started sending me jobs and so they they send me a job through the app and uh, i download and print the documents that they send to me i serve them to the address they tell me to serve it to and uh, then they put the money directly in my bank and that's uh uh, surprisingly pretty good you know that's pretty decent money uh, you don't have to work a lot of hours for it um, the big downside is uh, there's only so many jobs you you know you you can't do it all the time you just work when there's jobs out there uh, you accept them and uh, so some months you're gonna make more money than others but um, if you have a free schedule and uh you know you, you have a good reliable vehicle that's you know pretty good on gas uh, that's a pretty good way to make money and um and especially if you already have other streams of income so like for instance since i have a little money coming in from the e-commerce site and i get a little check from google now and then and I get a check from ABC. Now I'm getting checks from ABC legal now and then. It's all going directly into my bank account. It starts to just kind of relieve the financial pressure a little bit. And um, so, and there are others. So uh, I thought, okay, well, great. Uh, I'm making this money from ABC legal. Still not quite enough that I can quit my day job, uh, even with my other streams of income, but, um, uh, 
you know, this is going somewhere. So I started looking for other apps similar to ABC Legals that uh, I might use, you know, in a similar way. So uh, I started to uh, another uh, another one I did was Grubhub. Now, some of you probably heard of Grubhub. Uh, it's not going to be in every country, but uh, Grubhub will, uh, you know, it's it's uh, food delivery. So uh, same kind of thing. You, you know, fill out an online contract with them uh, and it is contract work. So you're not going to get any benefits. There's no sick pay. There's no paid leave. There's, you know, no insurance involved. It's a, you're contracting with these people. And, uh, but, uh, Grubhub sent me a nice little bag to keep the food warm in, uh, with their logo on it. And you download their app to your phone and then they start sending you jobs and you, you know, they, they send you a job. You go to the restaurant, get the food, deliver it where they tell you to deliver it. And then you, they, they make an automatic deposit into your bank account. And uh, I found Grubhub to be pretty, pretty good. It like, you know, it wasn't bad money. You're making probably a little over 20, like maybe 20 bucks an hour, something like that. It depends on your area and your region and a lot of other things, uh, what kind of car you have. And keep in mind that that's not net. You still have to pay insurance for your car, maintenance for your car, gas for your car. You still got to cover all your expenses. And um, oh, and you're going to have to pay take taxes on that income. So, uh, you know, another thing to think about. All right. Uh, in addition to Grubhub, I did Door, uh, DoorDash. And DoorDash is just like Grubhub. Uh, they send you also send you a bag to deliver the food in, but theirs isn't as high class as Grubhub's. And um, DoorDash is like, I see it as like the, you know, the, it's more like the, the, the lower class. So like Grubhub, you're going to be going more to fine dining establishments and stuff like that. DoorDash, you're going to be going to McDonald's, you're going to be going to Taco Bell, you're going to be going to Wendy's. Uh, DoorDash is more, in, at least in my town, DoorDash is more of a nighttime thing. You know, you do it from five o'clock till two in the morning. And, uh, you, know, you, you know, most of the people make their money at night. Grubhub, you're probably going to do better just doing lunches, you know, then maybe you could, you know, work for an hour early at dinner time. And, uh, but I didn't make nearly as much with DoorDash. Uh, the, you know, the, the orders are smaller, you know, your each delivery, you get a little less than you would from a Grubhub delivery. So, um, Anyway, it's good to have both because Grubhub, you're not going to be getting orders at 2 a.m., but DoorDash, you will. Uh, and then, okay, another one is called Instacart. Now, Instacart's a little different. Instead of going to a restaurant and picking up food and delivering it, you're going to a supermarket and shopping and then delivering the groceries, okay? And uh, it's harder work. There's less driving involved. You're spending more time on your feet. Uh, but the money's pretty good. I mean, I think that if you if you really hustled, you know, and you're in a good area, you could probably make a couple hundred a day uh, doing Instacart. Um, now, the way again, it's got all those same same things with as the other ones. You know, you're a contract worker, so you've got overhead. You know, that all the, the money you're bringing in is not net. That It's just uh, you got to add in your insurance, your gas, you know, um, your wear and tear on your vehicle. And uh, and you're going to pay taxes on those on that income at the end of the year. So while I was probably averaging 22, more than 22 an hour with Instacart, you got to figure it's probably more like 15 after you pay your taxes. Um, 
regardless in my town 15 bucks an hour is not anything to you know hold your nose up to uh there's uh people who work for less than that around here you know uh, anyway um that's it and then uh, the other thing i want to say is that like you know for all of this stuff uh, i think it's critical to have a youtube channel and use it uh, i have youtube channels if you don't you should uh you can it's a great way to drive traffic it helps lift you up in your search rankings uh, you can make money with a youtube channel eventually i've never made any money with my youtube channel but if i got up you know if, if, if i continue with it uh and it, it looks like i'm going to do that i'm going to keep building my youtube channel uh, there are people out there making pretty good money doing YouTube enough to quit their day jobs. And uh, so, but regardless of whether you do or not, um, you're going to need it to promote your product. Um, and uh, it just helps. If you, if you, sooner or later, you're going to find a reason why you need that YouTube channel. So just go ahead and create one now. Start working with video practicing, uploading, you know, start building those skills. The thing I want to make clear is like, I think a lot of people come to earning online thinking that they're going to make all this money overnight and they're never going to have to work again. Well, it doesn't quite work like that. It's a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of competition out there. You have to be dedicated. And it takes time. I mean, as I said at the beginning of this video, I've I started doing all this back in 2008, and it's taken me this long to get to a point where I don't feel really desperate that I need a job. I'd still take a job if somebody offered me one, but I don't feel like uh, like it's big big urgency. Like I I feel like I even. Um, if I can't find any other work that I'm going to get by, okay, I'm not going to be homeless next month because I got a little money coming in from my e-commerce site. I got a little money coming from Google. I got a little money coming from ABC legal. If I need to, I can, you know, go out and do some Instacart deliveries. If it's, if I'm desperate, I'll do some Grubhub. I'll, and if things are really, really bad. I'll work late doing door dashing. But uh, it's not uh, it's not do or die anymore, and things seem to be growing exponentially. I I anticipate that within another couple of years, I won't have to work at all. I won't have to leave my house to make money. Uh, I'll probably make enough from my e-commerce site that I won't even need to you know to do the deliveries or anything like that. So anyway, I uh, wanted to share this with all of you and I, I hope you found this information useful. It's taken me a long time to learn all this stuff and um, I, I, I hope you don't give up. Just keep, keep plugging away at it a little bit at a time and you're gonna get there, you know. Um, please uh, take some time to visit my websites. Go look at my YouTube channel uh, I have several of them, but uh, you'll find me on YouTube. Um, my main channel is David Scott uh, on YouTube, and I've got um, some tutorials up there and stuff like that. I've got another YouTube channel. just It's called Daveny, D-A-V-E-N-E. -E. Um, and uh, that's more of a personal channel. I share uh, more of uh, about where I live and the way, you know, what things are like where I am a um, lot of uh, footage of the landscape around where I live and the neighborhoods where I live, the town I live in, that kind of stuff. So uh, if you're interested in, in, in learning about that kind of stuff, um, New Mexico is a very interesting place to live. And I'm sure a lot of you would find some of that content interesting. Uh, also, 
my websites. Um, I've got a bunch of domain names, but uh, the first one I ever bought was called Free the Gods, freethegods.com. And if you go there, you'll find um, links to some of my blogs. Uh, it's connected to a lot of other stuff. Like there's a lot of links in there that go to other places, uh, go to my YouTube channels, go to my blogs, go to my other websites. Uh, there ad, there's ads on there for my e-commerce site and um, probably for G Suite and things like that. Uh, go take a look at that. I, I don't don't be put off by the cosmetics. I, I didn't spend a lot of time trying to make that page look beautiful and it was the first website I ever built. So uh, I guess, the emphasis wasn't on beauty. I was just trying to learn how to create content and to get some content up there. And then later it sort of became a hub for all of my other content. Um, and I recommend you do that if you haven't got a website like that up. You should create a website like that and, and interconnect all your content to it. Um, Another website you could look at is go look at my e-commerce site, chimayochilibrothers.com. And uh, Chimayo, you wouldn't know how to spell it. C-H-I-M-A-Y-O, Chimayo. And uh, Chile in New Mexico, we spell with an E, C-H-I-L-E, Chimayo Chili Brothers. Or you could just type in Chimayo Chili and you'll find us for sure. We'll be the first website that pops up in your Google Chrome browser. All right. Well, thanks again, you guys, for tuning in. And I, I'd love to hear your comments here. Uh, let me know if you found anything um, particularly helpful or if you feel like I have uh, need correction on something. Uh, or if you just have some ideas uh, that you'd like to add, if you think I left anything out, please, you know, let me know. I want to hear about it. And feel free to follow me on Facebook. Uh, or uh, Twitter or Instagram or wherever else you like. I'd love to see you out there. Good luck to all of you. And don't forget, we're all in this together.